Deputy Vice Chancellor, I present to you Maya Rose Shanti Craig as eminently worthy of the degree of Doctor of Science, Honours Causa. By the authority of the University of Bristol, vested in my office, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. Thank you, Richard, that feels <laughs> too kind. Um, but I also want to say, like, very deeply and sincerely, thank you to the university um, for this amazing acknowledgement of my work. And I cannot thank you enough for giving me this great honour. In fact, this originally felt so unbelievable that when I first got the email, I thought it was some strange type of scam or a prank from one of my friends. Um, and it took verifying the email to finally realise that it was, it was real. And I also want to congratulate the class of 2020, because today is the culmination of years of hard work, and you and your family should be immensely proud of what you've achieved. And I've been very fortunate growing up, having had the opportunity to go out into nature and develop a love of the environment and birds. But I do also have Bangladeshi heritage, and one day I suddenly became very aware that there weren't other people like me out enjoying nature. And this was my sort of light bulb moment. And I was 12 years old and I decided I wanted to do something about it. And so I hijacked this nature camp that I'd been organizing anyway and managed to persuade five visibly minority ethnic teenagers from inner city Bristol to take part. And it was a lot more difficult than I, I had anticipated. But when the, when the boys first got there, they were really excited. They were running around playing football until they were so exhausted that they passed out in their tents. But they were less happy the next morning when we woke them up at 6 o'clock to go on a walk in the local nature reserve. And it is debatable whether or not they were awake at this point, but that didn't stop them from dragging themselves off to the campsite loos to meticulously gel their hair. But, and at first, I felt like this weekend was going to be a disaster. I had parachuted these VME kids into the middle of the countryside, an environment that was completely alien to them. But it all changed while a volunteer started to chat to them about peregrine falcons. And they didn't seem to particularly care until he started comparing their flights to the speed of Formula One race cars. Suddenly, there was a connection, and he'd made things relevant. And I'm not trying to say that Formula One racing has culturally transcendental powers, just that people can't engage with and learn to love something that they have no reference points for. And creating this understanding and love for something new is the basis of all the work I do. And um, like Richard said, after the first camp, I wanted to know what the large nature organisations were doing to create change and improve this situation. So I contacted them to find out, and the conclusion was not a lot. So, but they were all very excited to hear what I had to say, a 13-year-old, on the very complex issue of race and diversity. And they all invited me up to their various head offices to um, discuss things. But in, unfortunately, I had the minor inconvenience of school and I couldn't start touring around the country. So instead, I decided to invite them all to one place and get people that actually knew what they were talking about um, to tell them what they were doing wrong. And my parents informed me that that's called a conference. So I started organizing a conference. And it was called Race Equality in Nature and it was eye-opening for these organizations. Most of them had never even talked to the groups of people that they were trying to engage with. It's when I started to realise how dislocated the nature sector was from these communities and that the complete lack of diversity in the sector was creating huge barriers to engagement. Um, but at least the conversation had finally begun at this point. And the output from the conference at least provided these organisations with a comprehensive to-do list of um, 
things, basically. But my personal conclusion was that more needed to be done. And so I set up an organisation called Black to Nature to promote these changes. And the work continues, like with more campaigning, more nature camps, a second conference in 2019, another this summer. Um, and slowly change is happening, but it needs to happen much faster because we need to engage everybody from every community to tackle the environmental crisis that we're finding ourselves in. Now, more than ever, it's important to recognise that inequality of engagement creates inequality of opportunity and an unequal one world can never be a sustainable one. And when it comes to you guys, I genuinely believe that you are the change makers of tomorrow. I have no doubt that you're going to go on and do great things. But I believe it's important while you do that to remember the people that weren't able to go to an elite university in a first world country. Not to apologize for how fortunate you are, but to understand that you are in a position of privilege and that with that privilege comes responsibility responsibility to provide others with the opportunity to break through glass ceilings and ensure that diversity and inclusion is on the forefront of your minds. And I hope that all of you have your light bulb moment like I did, where you realize what you really care about and really want to fight for. This degree that you've worked so, that you've worked so hard for and finally earned isn't just a symbolic piece of paper. Education gives you the ability to think for yourself to question and to really challenge your worldview and that of others. And class of 2020, I sincerely hope that you use these skills to really go out and change the world for the better. Thank you.